Hi kids, Pastor Kathy here. This week on CP Kids, we're gonna learn that when we make mistakes, God can help us learn from them. But first, let's go praise the Lord. Puts the moon 
so good. I could eat cereal every meal of the day. Oh, give me a bowl of cereal and some gummy bears, I'm good to go. I know you're supposed to eat your fruits and vegetables, and it's very important, but you just can't beat a big bowl of cereal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey there, Elaine. Want some cereal? It's the perfect lunchtime meal. Sometimes I don't understand you at all. Mm. Mm. Really good. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Tony, and this is the time I learned from my mistakes. We have an exciting announcement to make. We've approached Chef Elaine about starting a Connect HQ cooking show. <sighs> it's always been a dream of hers to teach other people her French cooking techniques. She's over the moon. That sounds so fun. Yeah, I can't wait to watch it. Well, you can do more than just watch. Making a show like this requires a lot of help. We were hoping the three of you could assist us by sampling the dishes that Elaine prepares. Sample. Yep. Elaine thought that you and Dot would love sampling the food she makes, and Tony, she was hoping that you would prepare the drinks that go with each dish. Oh, the, the drinks. She, she wants me to prepare the drinks? It's gonna be super easy. She's prepared recipe cards for you to follow. This is gonna be awesome. I can't wait. What do you say, Tony? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I, won't, I won't let her down. <laughs> Hooray! Filming starts this afternoon. We'll see you on set. Hey, Tony! Oh, hey. Everything all right? Uh, uh, you look a little stressed. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, so I have this friend, and someone gave him a job that he's not really good at. So would it be a mistake if he acted like he knew what he was doing and then just hoped everything turned out for the best? Just wait until you try the second dish, Dot. Have you ever tried natto or fiddlehead ferns? Uh, Chef Elaine, are you sure this food won't be, I don't know, too fancy for me? Nonsense. The food might taste strange at first, but it's just a matter of expanding your palate. Oh, Tony, there you are. Oh, yeah, uh, Chef Elaine, I was actually looking for you. Um, I have some concerns about making the drinks. You too. You'll be fine. There's nothing to worry about. Just follow the directions on the cards. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to talk to you about. Um, Chef Elaine, we need you on set. We're almost ready. I'll be right there. Can I count on you? Do you have everything under control? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. Good. All right, you all look great. Oh, and that soup smells delicious, Chef Elaine. Great work. Thank you both. <laughs> For this part of the show, we'd like to get footage of Dot drinking the beverage, if that's all right. You got it. Great. We're rolling in three, two, one, action. Oh. Mmm. <coughs> uh, uh, Dot, is everything all right? Yeah. Wasn't expecting that flavor. <coughs> well, that's okay. Let's try it again. That is, that is something. Could you go for a more, uh, natural expression, Dot? Let's try. <laughs> hey, uh, everything okay? The food hasn't been too bad so far, but Elaine's drinks, they must be too fancy for me. Uh, too fancy? Yeah, you know, fancy foods and drinks always taste weird to kids. They never have enough sugar. Good to know. Man, 
Making a television show is a lot tougher than I thought. Tell me about it. I messed up so many times while I was down there. Hey now, don't beat yourself up too bad for the mistakes you make. Sure, you've flubbed a few lines, but take it as an opportunity to learn from your mistakes. If I could learn not to mess up next time, that would be great. A couple years ago, Maurice and I made a ton of mistakes in one day. And I learned God can help me learn from my mistakes. God can help me learn from my mistakes. God can help me learn from my mistakes. Exactly. So learn from all the times I messed up two years ago. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just learn from them and move on. It's one of the ways God teaches us wisdom. We're ready for all three of you on set. Let's give it another go. <laughs> okay, guys, you know the drill. Let's get some video of Dot. <coughs> that is really sweet. Oh, Dot, we don't need any commentary for this part of the shoot. Just try to give us a good reaction shot, all right? Let's try it a few more times, all right? Sure. not learning from my mistakes. All I have to do is keep a straight face while taking a drink. What's so hard about that? Hey, Dot, I should probably tell you that I added more sugar this time because... Sugar? I, I... Keep it up with the sugar. Enough sugar and I won't taste Elaine's fancy ingredients. Yeah, but I'm... Hey, guys. Uh... Hey. hey, how's it going? I'm still messing up. Teach me something else you learned from your mistakes two years ago. Okay, I can do that. I think I have the perfect verse for you. Great, go for it. Let's hear it. It's from the book of Proverbs, chapter 26, verse 11. Say it with me like this. Proverbs 26, 11. Proverbs 26, 11. As a dog returns to its vomit, bleh! As a dog, wait, what? Yeah. As a dog returns to its vomit, bleh! So a fool repeats his foolishness. So a fool repeats his foolishness. Some mistakes we make are on purpose, while others are accidents. No matter what mistake we make, we need to learn from it so we stop making that mistake. Otherwise, we're like a dog that eats its own puke. Ew. Yes. <sighs> are you okay? Come on, everyone. It's almost time to start filming again. Hurry, let's go! Yeah. Let's give it another try, Dot. Ah, it's green this time! Look at it! Green! What's in this one, Elaine? Mmm, green beans, artichokes, gummy bears? Uh, well, hey, 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 now. Yeah, I, 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 I tone What's it down. What's going on down there? Uh, uh, Tony, what is this? I asked you to make a simple mint limeade. Th this is... What is this? What have you done? I, um... Yeah, is I, this show a joke to you? Are you trying to make fun of me? No, 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 I've had enough. No. Is the room spinning or is it just me? I, I... Is she gonna be okay? At one point, I thought that she had drank enough sugar that she'd never sleep again, but I think she'll be fine. Well, that's, uh, that's good. So, what happened back there? Honestly, I'm just really terrible at following recipes, and I didn't want to let Elaine down. So, I pretended that I knew what I was doing, and I hoped for the best. And this is the result. I had so many opportunities to tell the truth, and I just let them pass me by. I feel terrible. Whoa. You know, I think there's a video in the archives that'll really help you. I'd, I'd love to see it. <laughs> Great. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God. We're searching God's word for things to discover This book is alive Full of answers and godly advice This book is alive See the wonderful stories inside Every day I'm searching, read through history and poetry
is alive. John. When Jesus' ministry began, he had 12 disciples. But one of the closest disciples to Jesus was named Peter. Peter was a fisherman, and Jesus called him to quit fishing and follow him. Peter had a huge heart and really wanted to do whatever Jesus wanted. Peter even took part in one of Jesus' greatest miracles when he walked on water. Peter was excited about being a part of the kingdom Jesus talked about, but then things took a bad turn. Jesus' ministry on earth was going to come to an end. The night Jesus was arrested, he told Peter that he was going to deny him three times before the rooster crowed the next morning. Peter told Jesus this would never happen, but of course, Jesus was right. While Jesus was on trial, the people recognized Peter as a follower of Jesus, and then everything Jesus said became true. Peter started to argue with them. He told them that he didn't know Jesus. I never met the guy. I told you I don't know him. Peter turned his back on his friend. When Peter heard the rooster, he realized what he had done and went away and hid. Sometime later after Jesus had died, Peter went back on his boat to fish. When Peter and Jesus came face to face again, you would think that Jesus would have been upset with Peter for turning his back on him. But that's not what happened. Jesus did not accuse. He didn't get mad. He just asked a question. Do you love me? Jesus asked this three times. Peter responded with a simple word, yes. After Jesus went back to heaven, Peter spoke before a crowd of 3,500 people. The man who denied Jesus in front of three preached about him to a crowd 1,000 times larger. Peter really messed up when he lied about knowing Jesus. But Jesus loved Peter so much that he forgave him and gave him a second chance. And not only that, he asked him to watch over his church. God gives us all grace and forgiveness when we mess up, no matter how many times we mess up. And so do all of us at Connect HQ. Even Elaine? Even Elaine, I think. <clears throat> I should go apologize to her and do whatever I can to fix the situation. And I should probably apologize to Dot, too, when she wakes up. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Shifling, do you have a moment? I'm, I'm here to apologize. I am so sorry. I was not trying to mess up your show. I. Uh, I, I, I'm just terrible at following recipes. Why didn't you just tell me this from the start? I, I tried to, I really did, but the more that everything went on, the more I felt like there was no way out, and I didn't want to disappoint you, and I just kept making the same mistake over and over again. I'm not telling you the truth. I, I'm sorry. I, I will do anything to make the situation better. I forgive you. <laughs> I don't ever make a mistake like this again. Trust me, I've learned my lesson. Very well. As for the shoot... What do you have in mind? Perfect dot. That looked great. Hi, I'm Tony and I'm with Connect HQ. I learned a great verse that I want to share with you. It goes like this. Proverbs 26, 11. 
as a dog returns to its vomit. Blech! So a fool repeats his foolishness. We all make mistakes, but none of us should make the same mistake over and over. That's like a dog eating its own puke. And come on, that's gross. Peter made a really big mistake when he said he didn't know Jesus. But Jesus wasn't angry with Peter. Jesus loved him so much, he forgave Peter and gave him another chance. And he does the same things for us when we make mistakes. Today, I kept making the same mistake when I didn't tell Chef Elaine the truth. But Mike helped me learn that no matter what kind of mistakes we make, we can learn from them and move on. That's one way God gives us wisdom. So the next time that you make a mistake, don't do what I did and make the same mistake over and over. Instead, think about this. God can help me learn from my mistakes. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Elaine gave me the assignment to figure out what's wrong with these drinks I made. Uh, the, oh, the carrots and the sweet potatoes aren't bad, but I don't think the cheese is good. Oh, oh that's a lot of sugar. Mm. And the eggplant I added is not doing it any favors. I did actually put mint and lime in that one. Maybe I wasn't supposed to blend the whole lime. All of us make mistakes, but we can learn to do better with God's help. And to have God's help, all you have to do is ask Jesus to be your leader and your number one friend. If you want to make that choice, all you have to remember are your ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is the leader of your life and your number one friend. Did you make that decision today? If you did, be sure to talk about it with a parent or a leader you trust. Ew, poor Dot. I'm so glad that Tony finally learned from his mistakes. You know, a fool keeps making the same mistake over and over and over. Proverbs 26, 11 says, as a dog returns to his vomit, ugh, so does a fool return to his foolishness. Friends, don't be a fool. Learn from your mistakes. Allow God to teach you from your mistakes and he'll help you finally get it right instead of making the same mistake over and over and over again. Remember that the next time you goof. We all make mistakes. We're all gonna mess up. But if we can learn from them, that's where the difference is. Okay, till the next time. I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, 1286. This week on The Loop, we're going to talk about good stories. By good stories, I mean the conversations we have with people when they ask you about Jesus Christ, telling them the story about Christ and what he's done for you. Before we do that, let's stand up and let's worship. my way.
Simple, silly story. Oh no, this card says we have to kick it up a notch. Uh oh. Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. Okay, so in most word games, you don't know the story, but you get to choose the words. But we're changing the game. This time, you get to know the story but we choose the words. I thought it was gonna be a straightforward story. It never is. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. Randomly place the word cards on the board to tell your new story. Then you'll reveal the words and act it out. Oh, oh okay, so we're gonna like create like a skit. It's, it's not gonna be eating disgusting things or wearing disgusting things. That has yet to be determined, Jamie. Uh... So one by one, we are going to Fill the story. So, Jamie. All right, I'm just gonna go for right on the top. So, we have our noun. Next one is part of the body, and <laughs> while I'm here, I'm gonna go with an explanation. Oh, perfect. That's great. So, adjectives. Verb <laughs> and noun. Oh. What? Not this one? I don't know. Okay, all right, I switched it, remember. No, no, Jamie, no. don't you put this I on me. I switched it. No. And then the last one. All right, verb. Okay, so that is our story. I hope it's a good one. 
We tell stories every day. But telling people about how Jesus changed your life can sometimes feel difficult. What if you say the wrong words? What if you sound like a know-it-all or a dork? Let's get some tips on how to tell the story of what you love. Uh, Jim Scared Jimmy? Hello? I thought I, I thought I called him. Uh, Jim Scared Jimmy? Uh, hello? Boo! Uh, Jim Scare Jimmy, you got me again. Why are you so good at that? I was ready to take out my computer. Oh got my you. Good. You got me Took good. Fools you. <laughs> got you, Judo Bob. Wait, what have you been up to? Where, where are you at right now? Well, this is my home, <laughs> my humble <That's> abode. <laughs> you know, I've just been uh, practicing my jump scares lately. I'm not by myself, though. I have my cat, Douglas. I've been uh -huh. practicing them on him, and uh, it's been pretty fun. <laughs> but he's a good guy. We like to have fun around here. <laughs> Does he do jump scares, too? Have you taught him your ways? You know, I've tried. It's tough to teach a cat jump scares because they sleep about 18 hours a day. Wow. What have you been up to, Judo Bob? Uh, well, uh, Judo Bob's just been training uh, his Padawans. So Judo has been a passion of mine since I was, you know, just a little, little dude. Judo is massive discipline. So you have to pour yourself into it. And it's humbling at times, especially when people put, you know, good moves on you. Yeah. But you have to persevere and you have to get better. It's kind of, you know, the same about Jesus, even like learning perseverance and uh, learning humility. What about you? What what got you into jump scare? Oh, buddy, as soon as I was born, my parents were like, oh, I scared them right away on day one. And I, I love it. So jump scares are scary. We know that, at least if you do them right. Right. But they're also fun. Uh, after you scare somebody, you still share some joy. That joy is part of sharing Jesus too. Joy comes from Jesus nice. and yes. it's all about sharing jump scares and joy and Jesus. And that's just what I'm about, baby. Where, where's, uh, is, is Douglas around? I'd love to say hi to him. You know, I was looking for him earlier cause I should feed him. Um, uh, I'm going to try to track him down, but it was still good talking to you, Judo Bob. You too, <laughs> jump scare Jimmy. Douglas, Douglas, where are you buddy? <coughs> Douglas, oh! All right, so we have all of the elements on the board. Let's start telling our story, shall we? One day, Ricky and Jamie wanted a new challenge. So Ricky said, let's dump a sagging balloon full of pickle relish. <gasps> oh my God, <laughs> a sagging balloon on our, I'm assuming, head. Shoulders. Oh, okay. <laughs> And Jamie, what, what do you think your response to that is? Mozart's armpits. That's oh. hard to say. <laughs> All right. Uh. Oh, we're doing it right now. You know, uh. it's more solid than I thought it would be. I thought it would be much more liquidy. Jamie. <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Oh, it's bubbling. Can you see this? Oh, it's oh, coming it's out like, like a, a little. Oh my goodness, no. Okay, here we go. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Mozart's armpit. That doesn't sound like something I'd say. Mm. It was fun, but not very <laughs> noisy. <laughs> it was too noisy almost. So Jamie said, I know we can. Anything but eat. Smash! <gasps> Yay, that's what I was thinking. A banana? Chunky gravy boat until it's all gone. What? This is not like a traditional gravy boat. This is a literal USA boat. <laughs> it's gonna get all over the place. Hey! Got it, got him, hey, got him, hey, got him! <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, this is a gravy boat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was hey a Oh my gosh! <laughs> I think that did it. Uh, okay. And that was fun, but still not aggressive. Oh, aggressive? I beg to differ. Yeah. Ricky said, hey, 
We've always wanted to. All right, remember, Ricky. No. Pretty sure this no, is the Danny. verb that you made me switch it to. Devour. Oh, no. A pizza. Let it be a pizza. Yeah, I'm sure a pepperoni they pizza. pizza. A garden pot of grape jelly and a skull full of unflavored gelatin at the same time. Seriously, I might gag. Okay. L listen, listen. Look at this. Just look. It's just the bounce. All right, one, two, three, go, Jamie. Ah. Oh. Nom, 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 oh. Nom, nom. <laughs> Isn't this crazy? It's like so crazy that we're devouring. Ah. Gross. What's not in it? I'm in it. All right, fine. One, two, three. Oh, oh. Oh, God, this Get is some more this is, <laughs> That's gross. I'm just mixing it up. <laughs> Things are different in 2020. <laughs> But make sure that in your hearts you honor Christ as Lord. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you about the hope you have. Be ready to give the reason for it, but do it gently and with respect. 1 Peter 3.15 My name is Riley and I used to be a gymnast. And used to is like the key phrase right there, like I'm no longer a gymnast. Like, it's been a long time since I've been a gymnast. I'll try to show you some moves if I can, okay? But you can't judge me. No judgment zone, safe place. I feel good about it. Ah, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, don't try any of this at home. Okay, ready? Splits time, here we go. Full, okay. <sighs> All perfect for me, you can't see. These awesome splits. But trust me, I'm doing them. Okay, you get the point. In gymnastics, a big skill that you have to master is learning how to flip. This is as terrifying as it sounds. It's basically launching your body into the air and just hoping that you have enough momentum to land it. Like, yeah, super scary. I was working on the skill and trying to master it. I would fall so many times. Like. Go for it, fall. Go for it, fall. Go for it, fall. Face plant, all the things. Super embarrassing, just really messy, really wrong. I got it wrong so many times, but there was one day where I was like, you know what, I'm tired of falling. I'm tired of face planting. Today is gonna be my day. And I feel like I walked into the gym with more like swagger. There had to be some like really cool, like motivational music behind me, like in my brain, like the, Da -da -da -da. I had all this courage and I was like, you know what, today is gonna be the day. And so I get ready, I prep myself, I'm on the mat, I'm ready to throw it, the moment happens, and I land it, yeah! The crowd goes wild. Everybody was cheering, my whole teammates were cheering, my coach was cheering. We were all so excited for me to land that flip. And it's not because I just landed that flip but it's because everyone in that room understood how many times I had tried and tried again and how many times I had gotten it wrong and how many times it had been super messy and face plans and all the things, they knew that. And so it made landing it for the first time so much sweeter. My mom took me out for ice cream and that's my favorite thing. So like, it was a good day for me. And I think that it's the same with Jesus. Listen, you and I, we can pretend like we're perfect and we've always been awesome and we've always had it figured out and we always make the right choices. I could have told you that I was born doing backflips. Like I was born and then before I could walk, I was backflipping. But those don't make very good stories because they're not God's story. God's story goes, you were reckless, you were messy, you made mistakes, you were rescued, you were loved by me and now you're restored. You are awesome because of my love. And that's what evangelism is, is it's telling God's story and letting Jesus be the hero. It doesn't have to be over-exaggerated. It doesn't have to be some heartbreaking story and it doesn't have to be perfect. 
Sometimes people just need to hear about the hope that you get to feel each and every day because of Jesus. God's good story invites us into a world that is much larger than us. So Luke, let me ask you this. What story are you telling? Oh, it's like gotten a little crusty. Yeah, it's like <laughs> oh. congealing. Huh. Well, the awesome news is we all have different stories. So what's your story, Ricky? How was Jesus a game changer in your life? So I didn't necessarily grow up like in the church, mm -hmm. I guess kind of like around the church. Uh, and so I think I had a pretty different view of Christians kind of growing up. Like I saw that they, I thought that they were kind of hypocritical, like people would say one thing or do one other thing. I don't know, so I was keeping my distance uh, for like, part of my life. Uh, but then I actually met a really cool group of Christians who were like actively following Jesus and like they made it known and they also were very, uh, I guess just different. And just how they were living out their life, like being a Jesus follower uh, made a huge impact on me. And so then I became a Jesus follower myself. That's awesome. How about you? Uh, so I actually did grow up uh, in church, and I say in church, but I mean multiple churches because my dad was a music minister, and so we would travel all around the state going to different churches. There was uh, one Sunday where we were visiting a church, and I decided to follow Jesus at that church. And one of the biggest impacts that following Jesus has had on my life, the biggest game changer that I've experienced is that just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean that I haven't gone through uh, a roller coaster. It doesn't mean that I haven't had highs and haven't had lows. My faith in Jesus, it may not necessarily make my life easier, but it makes it possible to face those highs and those lows. So. Amen. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank well you. Well said. I think it's natural to be worried about evangelism because, I mean, it's a big word. Have you tried spelling it? Uh, but it's also a lot of responsibility. And the important thing to remember is when you're sharing your story, make sure you make Jesus the hero. Yeah, and I think we forget sometimes that we do that with our words, and sometimes we tell the story with our actions. this idea for a painting of, you know, how do I share what Jesus means to me without using words? Really sharing the struggle of what life can be, but then also the promise of the new life that Jesus brings. Throughout the week as I'm creating this painting, I had neighborhood kids just stopping by and asking questions and just really wondering what I was doing, why I was doing it. So I finished the painting. I'm looking at the final piece and just seeing what God was able to do through the struggle of it, the creative process. And these neighborhood kids are there with me and they're asking all these questions about it, really wondering why it means so much to me. And what was amazing to see in that moment was God was preparing them all along to receive Him, to make that decision, to see Jesus actually impact their eternity forever. Just because I decided to create and express something that was so meaningful to me. And that day, it shifted completely for them. Oh, yay! I'm so glad that it's on our set. Me too. I mean, it fits perfectly. It feels like it's been here forever. I love it. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you have. And when you share your story, make Jesus the hero. Everyone is looking for hope, so share it. This, uh, this we made, ew, <laughs> tells quite the story. Yeah, it was very, um, aw, beautiful. 
share your story. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. Get creative. What is one way that you can use your story to show Jesus to people this week? Because each of us have unique gifts, passions, stories that we can use to show other people the love of God. What is it gonna look like for you? Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you have created each of us uniquely. You have given us talents that we get to use to help other people. And so I pray that we would be looking for opportunities to use what you've given us to show your love to others. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Remember, get creative. What is one unique way that you can use your story to show Jesus to someone else? See you next time. Hey, COVID-6. Is it wonderful to know that every single thing you do every single day has an opportunity to share Christ with somebody, whether through a good conversation or maybe some artwork that you've done or maybe a drama that you've done with the church, all sorts of things that you do. The way that you act can personify who you are through Christ. This week's Bible verse comes from 1 Peter 3.15, and it says, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you, to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Guys, I hope you take every opportunity this week to be more Christ-like, to go out and share his love, and to do in a way that people ask you that question, why do you act this way? And you get to say, because I know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Guys, we love you. We miss you. We can't wait to see you if you're not here at church. And if you are here at church, you know me. I'm going to pick at you a little bit because we love you. All right, guys, have a great week. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, Isn't it amazing to know that every single thing you can do? Ah, uh, sweet potatoes. Drink those gross drinks. Ew, gross. Those glad that Tony, 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 Tony. Poor, no, all gives us wisdom when goof. He kept making mistake after mistake after mistake, and he didn't fess up until finally it got too far that he finally. Remember, we don't want to be fools. We want to be wise. And I can't say this at all. I cannot say this. It's easy, but yet I just can't do it. Yeah. And we can make more mistakes and more mistakes and more mistakes but then eventually we're gonna learn and it's gonna be great because we learn and God gives us wisdom and then we'll make these bloopers and it'll be fine poor dot maybe next time you won't goof so bad of course you could be doing like this and be just a fool <laughs>